weird. It's normally plays. I hear the music when it comes on. Why isn't that playing? It's playing to listeners. Oh, it's when I'm recording, I guess. Hi, this is Jim the Keys bartender and coming to you from uh, Jenna Kelly's house, her tiki bar. Let me turn this off here. Let me pause that. Uh, I was you trying have, to use my, you, I'm trying to use my pen. Your stylus. My stylus. My, <laughs> my pen wasn't working correctly. I guess there's a lot that happens to a lot of guys my age when their pens aren't operating correctly. Luckily, there's things that correct that. But yeah, I have a touchscreen laptop and I'm doing the sound and all that stuff. So it's episode 177. 177. Yeah, we're on the home stretch going in 200. Ooh. And we, uh, I call this episode Bouncing at 30,000 Feet. Uh, 30,000 feet? Feet. Feet. No. Uh, <laughs> it's not bouncing like the, the porn bouncing where you mile high club. Actually, it would be the five mile high club. Um, bouncing like you would at a bar. Oh, gotcha. Bouncing someone out. And uh, there's a reason for it. And it ha had nothing to do with my recent trip. It was someone coming in. Uh, so this past last night, at work, uh, there was a young man. I hope. It, do we have everything in? Did I put my line in? Oh, I hope this is recording Are right you now. Recording. I Your line is in. Yeah, but it didn't ask when I put it in. That. I wonder if we can listen to it at the same time. You know what? I've never tried it. Trying to listen to the show. I think sometimes there's a delay. There is a delay. Sometimes I believe there is. But yeah, I, sure. I guess to save save us from doing like, when do, where does this show up on Spreaker? Does Spreaker right? Can I even get into it now? Let's see. Well, last night there was a young man. Let's see, Travis. Let's see what's going on. That's a new episode. The shows new. Oh, it's live. It say it's going live. Let's see. I just hope they can hear us. Yes. It says we're going. Um, it says we're going out to listeners. So. All right. Who knows? Who knows? Yes. Um, the the um, because I had this set up for headphones and I swapped them in. I think I may have hit line in, but um, it was nine o'clock at night. We had a relatively busy night for a Monday, and uh, what happened? Uh, I I feel we could talk about it because it didn't happen in our establishment. Okay. And I don't put anybody at, uh, but it was weird. Uh, my friend uh, uh, noticed someone was walking on the highway, Route 1, uh, careening down, walking barefoot uh, down the bike path and, and staggering left and right going into the highway. So, um, the, the bike, well, okay, so in Key Largo, we have, like, a bike path that's paved specifically down, and there's also a little bike lane up on the street. This is the one on the south side of Route 1, on okay. uh, northbound so lanes. So, it's a, it's the a separate lane. bike lane, so they're not actually in the street. Well, he was going into the street. In, okay. He was going to where he was. He was going in the street, and he was staggering. He was obviously drunk. He did not come out of our establishment. Okay. And, uh... He had gone up a block, and they seen him, uh, I guess, as he went by. He must have, uh, he actually didn't go. He was on the opposite corner, so on the next street down. But you could see him staggering all around. So she had me go out and run after him. And he had gone down the next street line. And he was leaning up on the fence where there's a, uh, a fruit stand. And he was tall. He was around 6'5", tall, thin guy, uh, young looked like he was anywhere from 20 to 23. Okay. Um, and um, found out his name was Tim, eventually. Okay. But he was a mess. No shoes, no keys, no wallet. You know, I, I would so, have like, checked drunk it. drunk or drugged out? I, I, or... I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell with this one. He, he was staggering. He could have been both. Okay. But he, he said, uh, eventually we got at him they left a party. With his friend's house. I don't know how good of friends they were, you know, to let a guy like that leave. Right. And, and he told us where he eventually found it. He remembered his address. Kind of. He said 441, then he said 141. And I won't say the street because okay. I don't want to give the guy's name away. Um, I mean, Tim. There's tons of Tims. Yeah, so. there's a lot of Tims. Tims. So, but it turned out it was 11 miles south. 
Jeez. And he was heading north. But it was near a place that had lime in the name. Okay. And it was going down Lime Drive. Gotcha. So, I mean, he wasn't even close. And uh, he said he was looking for his car. He was going to sleep in his car, but he didn't have his keys, so he probably wouldn't be able to oh my get in there. So we took him. We're, we're, we're calling up to get a cab for him, and they said 10 minutes. So we, I carried him, uh, put him, you know, put my arm around his back, put yeah. his arm over my shoulder, and car- carried him back to the catch. And as we're walking back, he said, where are you from? And he heard my friend, who's from England, uh, accent, and he says, where are you from? And I said, Philadelphia. He goes, so you're Irish. And I go, that's not, I said, Philadelphia. I mean, if you picked Philadelphia, it's actually from the a place in uh, the Middle East, Philadelphia, there was a place called it was a Greek, it's a Greek name. Okay. But I don't know where he got that Philadelphia, other than Pennsylvania. There's a <laughs> Philadelphia, Mississippi. And, and he goes to Irish. And I said, well, I happen to you know, be of Irish descent, but that's neither here. And he starts talking about Belfast and Dublin and this. And he, get, he had some kind of wiring in his brain. He, was, he says his parents were from Ireland. And I don't think they were from Ireland, he said. He so kept on talking about Belfast and Dublin. And then he started talking about an English soccer team, Tottenham. And then he said, uh, and my friend is of Irish descent, but she was original in nationality, was English or British. Right. And um, he said, well, fuck the English. And she goes, just drop him right here. No, she ah. wasn't going to do it. She was, <laughs> she's laughing. And uh, we knew we couldn't leave him. Or we'd uh, drive him. I would I would even drive, driven him, but we had another hour right. at work. Got him back to the cat, sat him down, uh, waiting for him, gave him a glass of water, and the uh, uh, we kept on asking him, you know, what's your phone number? And he started telling us his address again. I said, we understand, we got your address. What's your phone number? He told me like three, four times. It was pleasant enough as anybody gets drunk. When they're that wasted. They were wasted and eventually got a ride. And, uh, and then t- this morning I uh, checked the, or this afternoon I checked the uh, Monroe County Oh, the, the app for, to see if he was arrested? See, so he was arrested. If he, they couldn't find his house, they may have just dropped him off and right. he got picked up. But um, he did. So I got assuming he got home. So I'm hoping, yeah, or, or, hoping he got yeah, there. Yeah, he got oh. home. Well, I, we, you know, we gave him pay for his cab. Yeah. We put him in his cab. I gave him, gave him a nice tip. And uh, the, uh, the thing that brought me back is earlier in the week, I met these uh, two lovely ladies, a mother and a daughter. Uh, Janine and Jennifer. Uh, they're originally from Antigua, uh, but now they live in the, in the States. And uh, Janine is a flight attendant. Okay. And uh, I, I reflected, because recently you've seen, uh, I think the last couple of years, these stories about people tell these nightmare stories of how it's on an airplane. Yeah. You see and people, the videos, people getting dragged off of like doctors getting dragged off of airplanes and all kinds of crazy I stuff. I know, but I mean, no one's really, and you never hear anybody responding. The response is usually from like a spokesperson for the airline. Right. It's not the person that was there. It's not the flight attendant. Yeah. And I thought about the similarities. If I worked at a, let's say a Dave and Buster's or uh, some big chain like uh, uh, the Olive Garden. Okay. That if something were to happen, I wouldn't be able to respond. It's corporate, so someone from a corporate and a corporate home office would be the one to respond. Now, because a lot of restaurants, other than airlines, aren't corporate; they're just mom and pops. People can respond on their own because there's no big thing. And you know, if it's a serious, if it's a serious thing, but if it's a serious accusation, you usually have an, a, a lawyer or something like that. But even on minor, even on a minor. Um, uh, infractions, uh, airlines tend to go to their uh, public cool. relations. Right, yeah. So you, you don't never hear from the a flight attendant exactly what happened. I'm sure you hear if they get sued, they get to tell a jury what happened. But think of it. You know, a lot of times when people get, they get they're, on the, um, they're on the plane. Once you're, I mean, if someone was difficult at a restaurant, we could 
bounce them right out the door. Right. As soon as you call the cops, you're out of here. On a plane, it's very easy. On a, really well, well a I mean, on a plane you can remove them, but it's then it's difficulty, and it's tight quarters, so you have to do it as diplomatically as possible. And people have a tendency to use every advantage they have when they're difficult to stop from to stop themselves from being an asshole. They'll just they'll just use every advantage they have, and that's people around them, and they'll try to, you know, they they people don't know what that person did to. The ticketing agent, the flight attendant, whether their seat, that's their seat, how they behave the whole time. And, you know, people have a tendency to band together when they're on the plane. They're all in it. There's passengers and there's flight crew. Right. right? Now, at a bar, we have, you don't have, uh, at a bar or restaurant, you have something that really weighs in. Imagine if you're a flight crew and 30 or 40% or 50% or more of the people in on the plane were friends or acquaintances of you and the other person was a stranger to them. You getting what I'm mm-hmm. saying there? Right. That they identify on the plane, they identify with the passenger, not with the flight crew. Right. But at the restaurant, they identify with me, not with the problem customer. So mm-hmm. it's automatically, I have an advantage. So this is what I'm telling you about the similarities and things like that. And when I have to do it, I'm just seeing people say, yeah, I know how Jim is. Jim didn't tell that guy to you know, go fuck himself, right. which I may have. But <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I, Jim, Jim didn't push him rudely or something like that. Probably the person intimid, you know, did something aggressive towards right. him or something like that. I get the benefit of the doubt. In the case of a lot of these air crews, they don't get the benefit of the de- uh, doubt. Uh, you hear um, that some of the recent stories was a 15-year-old girl taken off a flight due to overbooking. And she was taking off a plane that she was on a flight with her mother. And her mother was at another seat, and she wasn't told, and she didn't find out until the plane was out of the air, out in the air. She was told that, that her, her daughter, child. her minor child, was taken on. Now, there could be more to this story. Right. The child, you don't know, how 15-year-olds don't necessarily act that way, you know, act a certain way. Uh, and on a, on a flight, they don't really care if you're over 10, I think, you're considered almost like an adult. I Meaning, the like seating way. You don't get a break break on your ticket, so you may not you may not have that um, statistic that telling you the age of the passenger. So they're looking at, and the kid doesn't know how to respond. A fifteen year old kid doesn't really, you know, they think they're grown up, right? right so they yeah. say, hey, listen, you got to tell my mom, and maybe she wanted to get away from her mom. Just fucking break, you know? I get, yeah, I don't have to go on this. Tri- I didn't want to go on this trip anyway. Just, yeah, I'll get off the plane. My boyfriend's my boyfriend's home. We're going. Yeah. I'm going back. Yeah, I'm getting you never off the plane. You don't. You don't know the oh, possibility. Well. Possibility they could have been air, airline could have been 100 percent wrong, but it also could have been an oversight and there could have been miscommunications. Well, I'm not absolutely. getting any break from an airline for this. I'm not getting like that. No. no. Although, I mean, you can't book a flight without your name, your date of birth, all of your information. How do they not have her boarding pass and not? I know. I don't know what's on the sheet. I don't know what's on the sheet. I don't know what the sheet of the person that has. They may have just. I mean, you want to make may want to make it as simple as possible because you see a seat number, you want to see a name, right? A male, female. You're right. You're right. You're very right there. And if it is, and it could have, it could have had unescorted. And since the mother wasn't sitting next to her, they could have thought it was an unescorted child. Which, but even so, would you? Would I'm not. I'm not. Well, I'm would not, you do that to an unescorted? No, 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 not not necessarily. But I'll, I'm, 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 I'm I'll leave it to. Was, I'll leave it to. There's plenty of people that can attack there. I'll leave it for that for another show on right. that. And, and then another one. This is recent. There was a delay in getting to the gate. It was on hold. And it was a couple hours. The gate wasn't available, I think. And they were giving out water. And the guy suggested, "Well, I hope that's vodka." Maybe you should give it, giving us some vodka because of the inconvenience. And We're, stressing us out on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he may have, have, have uh, what, there could have been a back and forth, and then eventually they called the air marshal. Right, and they were like, okay. They had the air marshals. I mean, the air marshals aren't on every flight. They're not on every flight, but in this case, um, they, they, they did. And, and then you have the physician that got bloodied. and the, right. But we... Uh, once again, unless we're there at the time, you hear the story and stuff like that. But I, I can just think of how difficult you're in that metal tube. Right. You're in the air. You're outnumbered. Yeah. There's uh, 
on many of these flights, there's maybe three, four, at most four, uh, unless it's one of those, uh, the jumbos where you got uh, multi-levels, multi-levels and, yeah. and stuff like that. But if you know, on a 140, 50 person flight, they, you know, have three to four flight attendants. I don't know what they normally I'm need to do. Sure. I don't, I'm not sure either. Not I think sure it's four. The most I see is four. It depends on the plane, I guess, of how many. Yeah. And the size and how yeah. many. But, and it's not like a teacher. Think, imagine teachers. you got to control a room. This, the people are under stress. The uh, the passengers, right? They're under stress. Some, a lot of them. A lot of them don't like flying. Right. A lot of them, um, uh, you know, they just, the, some of them are naturally assholes. And they go into their mode, their protective mode. They're not, they, the people, the way they fucking take over the armrest. Yeah. Or move their seat all the way back without even asking. On uh, what one flight, the flight I was on, the Spirit, you can't move the seat back. Right. Which I, you know, actually it's a discourtesy to everyone. Which I think is pretty nice. Right. You know what I mean? No, no, no one can move their seat back. You know why? Because you don't know how to fucking handle it. <laughs> you don't know. You know, you, you're you're uh, having no tray tables. There, there's not? Not on these. I don't think they have them on short flight. I didn't, I don't, I don't, unless I'm getting something to eat, I don't attempt to drop the tray table. I can't. I always I, drop it to put my iPad on it. Yeah. Pretty sure we had ours the last time we went. Well, I don't care. Did we? Hello, all. Tyler's here. Oh, yes. Tyler's, Tyler's <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. Tyler. No, um. But, I mean. The Spirit. I can't remember. Did we fly Spirit? That's all we ever fly. No. Oh, United. Or United. Yeah, uh, no. You just started flying Delta. Uh, okay, well, that, United. We one of one of them. Uh, one of the uh, planes that seats didn't even go back. You know? I, uh, I didn't. Spirits didn't. Oh. They have okay. the button, but it doesn't move. Yeah, yeah. Which is great. Fuck them. People can't handle it. They can't fucking handle it. Well, I mean, if it's an international flight and you're crossing a pond, that's one thing. If you need to lay back and chill. But most most flights, domestic <coughs> flights, are like three to five hours max. Well, I know. Well, they take taking away the leg room and stuff like that. But the flight attendants have to handle that. You know, all the a passenger can comment on social media, right? But if a flight attendant or a crew or a ticket agent, yeah. they can't go and say, you don't fucking understand I was at, with the ticketing agent, I can see this. The ticketing agent's sitting there, and they see, they're right next to the bar. It was, uh, I said, that when I was in Philadelphia recently, it's right next to the bar, chicken piece, nice place. And you see people getting fired up, doing shots, shouting and stuff like that. They're like they're at the corner bar. Right. And they are ready to get on a plane. They want to go. They're getting they're fucked like, up before they get on the plane. Yep. Yeah. That's, it's just one of those things to get them. And it doesn't, it, it's supposed to be a depressant, but... You know how some people get. Some people are fine. They get sleepy after it. Yeah. I get friendly, I think. Friendly. I mean, in the <laughs> single days, I get a little amorous. Some people get aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Very aggressive. Very aggressive and on the plane. And some of it's depending on the alcohol they drink or depending on, yeah. Yeah. So the flight attendant has to deal with that. And then you think of the similarities. The clientele you're introducing is intoxicating. In the establishment, if someone shows up intoxicated, we can't serve you anything. We don't want... Oh, well... Go someplace else. Sound Get out of here, you know. And then we say, "Listen, you, we don't want you to drive. If you do drive and you're drunk, we could we can even say we'll call the cops if you get in your car and drive. I mean, we got friends on there, you know. We got people we care about. We we care about everyone actually. But um, what are you going to do in a, in a plane? You know, if they're intoxicating on a plane, it's hard to really tell them they're too intoxicated to get on the plane. Well, the but you could tell beforehand that someone's going to be difficult. What, what I mean, when you're in midair. Oh, in midair. I'm talking what about you when you're right, on the ground. I mean, like, what do you do? In midair, you have no choice. You have to somehow mm. tolerate these people and deal with them. Well, I saw you some know? pictures. I didn't put a picture. The picture I posted is on a Russian flight. And a guy, I don't know if he banged himself or by banging his head or something like that, but he had blood and all this stuff. And he was just going nuts on the plane. Uh, but the, I can imagine when they're, you know when people come in, you can tell how they are. Yeah. You can tell how they are. There was, um, they get overly aggressive. Sometimes they're overly friendly to people. They're, they're, you know, start harassing some of the employees or the other passengers. Imagine you sit next to someone and they're drunk and he starts putting his hand. There were people molested on flights. This is why flight attendants get paid really well. And oh. they don't have to work very well. Well, they used to, years ago when they did it, 
they did it. They were in a, whether you smoked or not, you smoked. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh. On a plane? Oh, because they had, when I was a kid, I, uh, there was there was ashtrays built into the yeah. arms of the, of the plane. When I was growing up, they weren't ruled out. I mean, they were still there, but you weren't allowed to smoke on them. Okay, you know, but I remember I them smoking. Remember and there was and list. and people used to smoke like fucking crazy on the plane. Cuz they like I said, most people are nervous about flying. Right, so they're just chain yeah. smoking. Yeah, I try to chill out before it. And then you have the demanding clientele, not only oh. that, we well, forget them being smoke. Like the I want to get I want a pillow, be. I want a blanket, um at a bar, the similarities, you know, you have people that give me ice, I want lemon, give me a bunch of lemon to a bag. I want a lot more ice. Can you get rolls for the Just table and stuff like that? The one, three minutes ago. they one at a time. You like get your one thing, get your one thing, and it's and you'll notice. Thank you. The person that's hitting, always hitting the button. Yeah. The it's a ten percent. They call it a ten percent rule. There's ten percent of the uh, people that demand ninety percent like, of your complain, attention. And those are the people that are going to like be on social media, but like. I asked for a pillow and it took her 45 minutes to get me a pillow. And yeah. blah, 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 blah. And I want to speak to a manager. They don't know, yeah. They yeah. don't know what that other person, that other person could be getting uh, um, something for a baby that's puking all over right. the place. Or someone who's having a panic attack. Yeah. They, they have other things. Someone thought, think they may be having, they may be having a heart attack. No consideration. Yeah. Well, and they don't and like where they're seated. Or they don't selfish. like where they're seated. Right. And they take it out at any establishment any established, whether it's a restaurant, uh, airplane, if they're not happy with what they get, they take it out on the, the representative. Server. Yeah. Oh, the rep, what it is, like in Publix, this guy stocking the thing. Well, you raised the price on the pork and beans. It's like and the guy that's stocking the shelf, yeah, he raised the price. <laughs> yeah, you think he did? No, the guy that raised the price on that is not in the fucking building. <laughs> right. Yeah, My and the person that made yeah what thing about flying what is I have to check the flap and the seat back in front of me and see if the bark bag is still there because I'm always curious if the person in front of you know before me puked used it and puked in that seat because then I'm just weird you know germaphobe that's the only thing that I'm a germaphobe well there's about. germs in that puking. fucking seat no matter whether they're oh, puking I know or that. not I mean people have. Leaky. Well, they say the air Leaky. dryers in your bathrooms now are just as bad, like the restaurant what? bathrooms. The air dryers, instead of paper towels, they're yeah. using the air things. you got to think it sucks in all of the bacteria in that bathroom, and then it shoots it right onto your hands. You're right. The you're airborne right. fecal matter. <clears throat> yep. You're spraying Bleh. it onto your hands. <laughs> but, but wait, 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 wait. Oh, it's not hot. Yeah, it's just regular air. Regular air. It's not hot, it's not hot air. If it's hot, it's just hot air poo. <laughs> oh, on those fucking planes, you go in. Every, if you walk into one of those stalls in that plane, you don't have. You can barely turn around into the in the, in the bathroom. So there, yeah. I mean, there's to, no real AC in the bathroom either. No, no. And you, if you really, and air, the food they sell at airports are so specially gonna, designed to make you have um, to poo. Have to. So, so you're go gonna real, go in the airplane and sit on the toilet, sweat a little bit, okay. and yeah. poo yourself. In the I did. I, 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 it's it's tough, but if you gotta go, it's better than it's better than sucking it in. I've had really bad gas <laughs> on the plane, and I, man, I held it. I, I sucked it in. I sucked it in so much it felt like it was going to come up <laughs> from from my lower from my duodenum, which is close which to your is anus. Your descending colon. Yeah. Yes. All the way. I think I backed it all the way up back to my esophagus. <laughs> So I mean, it it just sound, he felt was like burping farts. Yeah, yeah. Burp, I just burped a fart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone said. I remember a comedian said that about his son. His son goes, um, "I just uh, burped a uh, burps, burps and um, uh, burps and puke. You, you puke. Yeah, that's what you did. You just yeah, like puked. a burp. Yeah. Yeah. Threw up in your mouth. You threw up in your mouth. That's what you did. I tell you about that in the. When I was in the Navy, someone uh, during uh, uh, inspection, uh, the guy was out the night before, and he was in my squad, and I'm looking to my right, and I see him, his uh, cheeks puff out, and they come back in. <laughs> and I go, 
he goes, uh, afterwards, I go, man, I thought you were going to puke. And he goes, what do you mean you thought I was going to puke? I puked. I said, you? Yep. I go, wow. Puke I said like this, it. and you did it. And I said, you know, you passed. You passed inspection. Yeah. If you had puked, you would not. Oh, <laughs> I had that. I, I puked during a run. But that's all right. They don't care as long as you get your time in. I had a good time when I was running with puking. But I, I, I digress. Um, <laughs> but uh, when you're up on a plane, like I said, all the things that someone has a problem when they want to speak to a manager, yeah. uh, they want it, something comp, they just feel so frustrated that they don't get what they want. It just builds up, builds up. They can't leave. Entitled. They can't leave. Yep. yep. And they'll take it out. So if you hit turbulence, are you going to complain about the pilot? That got you there safely, even though you hit turbulence. Mm -hmm. Like you'd be able to see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, just yesterday in uh, near Tulsa, Oklahoma, there were tornadoes popping up right yeah. near the airport. We watched videos last night about yeah. it. I've never experienced a tornado. Oh. I've seen water spouts out here. I've been surrounded yeah. by them, and that's okay. That what's the What's the difference? It's mm -hmm. no water difference. spouts over water. I, it's a tornado <laughs> over water. That's I know. Thing. I'm at the force. Like if you got hit. Um, it, there's a lot of difference in the force. Because I mean, it, it sucks out from the water, right? It, it it drains it of some of the they're, energy. They're small. Yeah. They're so small compared to... You're not going to find a mile-wide water, water spout. Oh, no. That would be some uh, like a day after and, tomorrow yeah. thing. It, um, but I remember a couple of years ago where, yeah, when you'd see the water spouts, mm -hmm. you'd see like four over here and three over there. And I you believe go, you're on the real rotation, locals with the Florida Keys. Yeah. They I show them all the time. I believe that the rotation of a water spout... It's much slower yes. than a tornado because of the density of the water is so heavy to spin it, I believe. Is it believe opposite so. in the southern hemisphere, just like the toilets? I think they spin the other direction. Yeah. They, they, they call it a water spoot. Spoot. No, that's Canada. <laughs> yeah, you mix that with Canada. Um, but as we said, it's harder to kick a passenger off the plane. They, they have to secure them uh, when you, they become violent. They got to figure out a way to secure them. And a lot of times, there's not a there's not a <coughs> air marshal on every domestic flight. I was going to say that I don't think I've ever been on a flight. And no, they had that there was a marshal. That's where passengers yeah, passengers are, de are kind of unofficially deputized. It's just, right. And I wonder if it's true because so makes me think of bridesmaids. <laughs> what the marshal <laughs> is allowed to carry? Yes. Concealed, hidden very well. And they have a, but they use a different type of bullet on their ceramic the or something like that. They're also allowed to carry, but they have to be in a safe or a lock box, I believe. I believe they have to be rubber bullets, which cannot penetrate the. Yeah, you don't want to depress, yeah. uh, you don't want to depressurize the plane. Yep. But, you know, you sometimes you see how these fucking people act. You want them to, you ever seen the movie The Good Shepherd? No. Um, okay. It was, was Matt Damon, it was a C, he was a CIA, uh, worked for the man. agency. But part of it, his son, his son dates a woman in, uh, gets engaged to a woman in Africa. He's going to get married, and um, uh, the the country is kind of a, a proxy of the United States. And they find out the woman did some spying for the Soviet Union, and when she's traveling from her uh, village to go and get married in the capital to Matt Damon's son, uh, she gets on a plane. And midway doing a flight, they're over to Congo. You know how they used to get rid of dissidents back then when they do? Uh, Open the door to the plane. They did in Argentina. <laughs> they used to do in Argentina all the, the Argentinian Navy uh, 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 planes. They used to take dissidents out over the uh, ocean. They wouldn't do it on land for one reason, because oh. you don't want any evidence. Yes, yeah, but They just, you know, you'd fly them out miles out, uh, you know, you it's easy to go up 50 miles. And this, we're not, they, they, they didn't drop them. They, they didn't drop them close enough to. They wouldn't survive the impact. Yeah, the like impact. The water is like concrete. Yeah, yeah. So they, they would drop them out. But they show this woman, and you see her with, she's holding a wedding dress. She's, and she's going down into the jungle and stuff like that. And said, well, you know, some people, it's, it's cruel to kill somebody, but sometimes you can understand you might want to do that. But opening the door is kind of, <laughs> go say, hey, you want to get out? You know what, that's. You know, there's people that actually get panicky enough and try to open up the uh, exit hatch. You know, you say, "Man, I would, I would just really love to see someone." Well, you know, in in that concept, yes, some people, you know, and 
I mean, if I could throw someone, if 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 I uh, the old days, you'd see people in, in old west, you, you know, some of the movies, you see them getting thrown it through the uh, swinging doors. Yeah. Um, and if it's really high budget western, they throw them through the glass window. They didn't have those big windows back then, so I don't know how they did. I that. don't agree on like a purge, like the movie Purge. I yeah. don't agree on something like that, but you should be given one of the light socket um, finger rings. Yeah. And let society, or, you know, uh. let them choose their own fate. I, I, I saw that movie. There's a ring with two prongs. Yeah. That I've seen over Facebook, and it's just, you know, if you're stupid enough to stick that ring into the electrical socket and electrocute yourself, then, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, time really? was there. What was the premise of, okay. What, what, of the purge? Yeah. Just once a year you have 24 hours to free will and kill no police no nothing what was the uh, idea behind uh, it uh, what does it do control? yes I believe so oh really what if no you just get the violent people killing yeah. the non-violent people then you ended up with more violent people right that have a tendency to wait around a year to be violent so okay well either here and there well Janine uh, I'd like to thank you for bringing the idea that had there, we do have um, considerations where, where if you are on a flight you know don't, don't automatically assume that the flight crew is in the wrong uh, we, we can't automatically assume anything nowadays but who knows uh, on a lighter note I don't know if it's a lighter it could be serious uh, in my news feed I get uh, a lot of science I like science I don't understand it all the time. And they're calling it, they're not calling unidentified objects. UFOs anymore? No, they're calling them like UAFs or something like that. Un, unannounced, I don't know if it's some, if they don't respond or something like that, but off the East Coast, they say United States fighters have come, uh, Navy um, fighters have come in contact over the recent years. No, but they're thinking it's, it's not necessarily Aliens. They're afraid someone that actually has technology that's more advanced. Like so someone an actually. I don't know what. Well, you, you'll find it, and then you'll say, "Oh, that's what it is." But they just went instead of doing UFOs, they changed it to another I it was acronym. Like unidentified aerial something. Yes, something like that. Right. So, but it's something where they don't have a uh, a coherent emission. They don't see. You know, they don't see a propulsion system. And they see a, it's very nimble and fast and way uh, beyond the capabilities uh, of the U.S. Now, uh, the old days on the, in the West, they used to think that it, there's a testing grounds in the, in, the, in the far West where they used to think that, you know, if they were developing aircraft, you wouldn't tell, you couldn't tell anybody really. You wouldn't even tell someone in your own service if you're you testing. Are you talking about Area 54? Not necessarily 54. There's uh, China Lake. That's a Navy one out there. Area 54 was a, a great place to test planes because you, you you just restrict it and people automatically think. And I'm not I'm not poo pooing conspiracy theorists or doing that, but they they're suggesting because uh, Putin alluded to having a capability. I mean, if you took a certain amount of resources and threw it at a problem. You might be able to develop something. They're talking uh, now to do a hypersonic jet. There's a private company that's well, developing hypersonic jet that's going to go Mach, Mach 5, and they're talking about 90 minutes from New York to London, which is twice as fast as the uh, Concorde used to go. And prior to that, there was a ballistic... Uh, they were going to do a ballistic... Uh, that would go into a semi-ballistic trajectory, and it would actually go up to Mach 12 or something like that. But... The cost of it would be prohibitive. I mean, Elon Musk is coming. Oh, and one of the things with that Navy UFO thing, people, um, they, they suggest it was Russian or Chinese. The Chinese wouldn't operate off the Atlantic coast because that's not their, their base off. They, they do more Pacific. So it would be more Russians. But Russians, you'd think the Russians would be more in the Far East too because they have um, all that open spaces. And fine over Euro European our allies with the tight air defense systems, they concern. But that leaves the aliens, Russians, and uh, Elon Musk. See, I, People I, are suggesting I, that it's one of our uh, 
I don't see anything wrong with certain areas, you know, Area 54 and stuff like that, where our government is trying to make the newest and greatest best thing to have it restricted. You know, I... Yeah, you have to have it restricted. Yeah. If, you're, if you're, it's a defense I mean, industry thing, you're not going to start saying, oh, look, we're developing an air defense system. We're going to show you all the pictures of it, and this is how it works. Here's the schematics and stuff. That's not how you yeah. do it, because they're, well, they're working hard to steal it anyway. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Chinese have able, been able to buy advanced avionics from our allies. So it's like fucking Popeye's chicken going and getting the colonel's recipe... <laughs> And fucking, okay, well, we're going to get it. We're going to reverse engineer it. You say, well, there's Popeye's chicken. Oh, well, that's the same recipe we have. No, you can't prove it. What is, your, way, re- what is your recipe? We'll tell you what it is. UAP is unidentified aerial phenomena. There we go. That's why you th- we're thinking UAF because of the yep. phenomena. Yep. But all UAP. of that is the University of Atlanta, or uh, I'm sorry, University of Alaska Fairbanks is UAF. What? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you said UAF. I was like, UAP. 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 It's UAP. UAP. UFOs, UAPs, and Yeah, isn't that weird how they change the... Um, C-R-A-P-S. Well, so, multiple. Well, I mean, I guess it explains... But isn't it an unidentified flying object? It could be a weather balloon. Right. It could be a very but attractive aluminum kite. aerial phenomena. Could, could be mean, a cloud. It could be... It could, anything that flies. Yeah, well... Any, well anything aerial, aerial phenomena. It doesn't mean it's but, flying. Well, it could be floating. But phenomena would mean... It could be a reflection of a. It could be a reflection of a cloud. Can, yeah. Right. Yeah. But and then uh, crap, a C R A P, completely ridiculous alien piffle. <laughs> a crap. Yeah. This guy says, you know, it seems like all the data that we do have can help you distinguish between UAPs and what I call completely ridiculous Aryan piffle, such as crop circles, cattle mutations, alien abductions, and anal probes. <laughs> so that would be yeah. There's your anal probes. Anal probes. Well, how did well, that? You know, there's a lot of people that say they were abducted by aliens and that they were probed anally. So I'm guessing that. Yeah. The government ridiculous. controls all. There was a bit on. Uh, it was uh, kids in a hall, and they did these alien. Uh, they had the big heads, and uh, they're 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 standing at a console, and they said uh, one of the aliens talking to the other, and they're going. Isn't it horrible that we go over thousands of light year, years, years to come to Earth? We uh, we kidnap some specimens, and then what? We, what do we do? We you know we don't educate them. We don't pass on any gifts. We anally probe them, and what have we found? One out of ten of them don't seem to mind it that much. <laughs> You know, they show this guy leaning back, pulling his legs back and smiling. And the guy goes, don't you think we were meant for something bigger than this? Maybe we can, uh, you know, create more harmony, peace, uh, you know, enlightening for these people. And the guy says, no, our leader says this is what we do. We come over and we do it. He goes, come on, let me take your eye. Let's take your mind off of here. Have a drink and come over here and look at my collection of uh, anal probes. <laughs> And the guy says, fuck you. They just, they actually blanked it out because it was American television, but they could say fuck you at that time uh, on Canadian television, I think. So uh, that was a pro- that was great. And uh, on that note, do you know Christian Vivian? She's a uh, young woman. She's a uh, insurance agent over at, uh, right next to the Circle K. No, oh. And, and she's been a listener of the show. And she heard about the episode where we almost got into the Lover's Boutique, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, uh, and how it got shot down because uh, Luke uh, suggested that there was a possibility of him using uh, one of their butt plugs. And if there's such a thing as a vibrating butt plug, which I think there probably would be one, it would make sense. To do they got dildos don't and all this stuff. vibrating like everything. Everything. I would yeah. Think. yeah. I mean, but I don't know about putting anything electrical on my anus or anything like that. What's mm. different than the Maybe other? Maybe that's what the aliens. I don't put anything electrical on that end either. Maybe that's Same. what it is. These people think. Oh, you mean? Oh, wait. Aliens. A battery. A battery powered. You're right. Battery powered. And how much shock you're going to get from that? Right. Not I mean, that. it's I not mean, like a taser. Use it for the front side. What's any difference going on the back side? Well, I've never inserted any. I guess. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, you know. 
if a woman is using a vibrator, what's the difference of using a vibrator? Who's saying a woman's using plug? an anal plug? A uh, woman's using an anal plug. Maybe a guy is. Uh, either way. What I'm, yeah. what I'm saying But they're suggesting it, and, and the, the thing that shot us down was that they would they give probably, credence to the thought that Luke would be able to use one as a uh, try it out. Yeah. And then she goes, <laughs> she came up with the thing. What is there going to be a wall there? Fifty percent off of, uh, <laughs> of gently real. used no gen, gently uh, used anal plugs, lovingly uh, used uh, dildos, my, my, uh, uh, ref, uh, refurbished, older. refurbished, repatched blow up dolls. Right. You know, like, like uh, this is our, this is our clearance table. Yeah, the clearance table. <laughs> Everything is slightly used. a reupholstered <laughs> pocket oh, pussy. Sorry, you know. I'm sorry that everything's slightly yeah. damaged. Yeah, but I mean, but if, you would like to if use... you're on a budget and you need to get the top, the top selling uh, uh, vibrating anal beads, then maybe that's the way to go. On the clearance rack. Yeah, I mean, our uh, Jack Walker would probably buy off of that rack. Our walking Jacker. Yeah. Oh yeah, he said a uh, well used, uh, half off, uh, partially used uh, box lights. of Kleenos, <laughs> Kleenex. Uh, you know, open jer- uh, Jergen's open lotion. Jergens. Well, we took the Jergen lotion from the back of the one of the rooms, the viewing rooms, and uh, yeah. but you can buy this no instead of two dollars fifty allowed. cents. <laughs> yeah, if you've got a really good deal. Uh, you know what? We're at almost forty-one and a half minutes. I oh, think we should start yeah. pushing our uh, oh our reviews. Well, first, I wanted to thank listeners too. We've well, had um, yes, we've got listeners, new listeners. Yeah, from like. uh, Beverly Hills, California. Oh. And if you're a fucking if you're a fucking writer or a producer for one of those shows, and you're trying to glean an idea, we I don't think it's gonna work. I don't. It, sometimes it's not even really funny when we say it. It'll probably be even less funny when you say it. <laughs> but we could possibly be. The and, but if next you're not Big Bang Theory, except no, I, they don't. They don't go and discover you and do it. They just steal it. <laughs> the fucking steal it. like steal a fucking used anal probe. Just wait. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Just you, wait. you guys, if you're stealing, if you're stealing the material, you're like the guy that wants to use a vibrating uh, pre-owned anal plug. If, if it's if shortly, and then you expect you're, you're 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 just delivering an anal plug. If but if you were listening and you're just feel inspired or stuff like that, and you like to get more, because there's a whole lot of material. I have a book right here. If, of ideas. If we see shortly a sitcom that yeah. has an episode about the clearance table at the porn store, yeah. yep. we know where you got it from. Mm-hmm. And we're going to wash your hands. You should wash your hands of it we, right away. Literally. You wash your hands with an air Literally, dryer. yes. With a, with a, a fecal, <laughs> so, fecally defective. Fecal air and rubber. move your toothbrush closer to your toilet. Yeah. <laughs> How, Howie Mandel. Oh. Right, well, where's because me of the flash. Still having my toothbrush. In no, back. all you have to do is close the lid. Right, when you um, flush, no, myth it reduces no. it. Mythbusters did it. When you're pooping, just as bad. Yep. Your legs aren't together, so there's still fecal matter in the air that's good. No, ugh. I mean, hey, listen, let me explain something. Is it ninety percent of dust? If you're uh, if, if you're going to get rid way. of, if yeah, you're going to all your dust mites underneath your bed are all of your dead skin cells. Well, all around the place. Well, not it's mites. Mites are mainly, things. mainly, you know, pet dander, skin, dead skin cells, and stuff like that. It's dust. Mm-hmm. Right. That's dust. Yeah. And that, in these old houses, a lot of times, it's your skin. It's or rats, you know, and rats. rat hair. It's and, the skin from yeah. the rats. Skin from the rats and, right. and stuff like that. But yep. you know what doesn't kill you does make you stronger that way. You ever hear about uh, the idea of the ki- putting, making kids completely antibacterial is um, it's bad for them. Hurting their ability to fight. Yeah, yeah. because if you can, if you if you use anti-inflammatories to reduce uh, these inflammation stuff before they, um, because your body's fighting two things at a time. Like when your throats get sore, you just uh, I gargle with hot, hot salt water and let my immune system kind of fight it because I want to have that penicillin for when I fucking really need it. But uh, I, mean, I did say it before. But once again, if you are Honestly, there could be you could be sitting in your mansion or back in your uh, groundskeeper uh, shed on the back of Tom Cruise's. Sitting next to the pool. No, or if you're Charlie Sheen no, I don't Beverly think so. Hills. Charlie Listen Sheen's not in Beverly Hills anymore, is he? That's where the so going to be. Made. Okay. <laughs> Two and a half men. Okay, what, isn't there? Uh, 
What's your Beastie Boys song? Beverly Hills. That's where I wanna be. Yes. Yep. And they had that kind of like a Vietnamese <laughs> kind of girl in the background <laughs> singing it. Just saying, thank you, Beverly Hills, yeah. for uh, listening well, to it. Yeah, and Con and France, Con France, and not and Con where the movies are, Con C A E N, uh, Barcelona, Singapore. Ooh. Yeah, still no Hello, North Singapore. Korea yet. Dear leader, Get if you're going to listen, fucking man, I will send you. Oh, wait. You have connections up north near our cheese capital of the I world. I do have connections. If we can get it, we'll send you. I will send you squeaky Wisconsin. What's that farm? What's that? And uh, we'll send you one of those. It's Harvest Farms, Harvest. What's that? Oh, the, that's not a real story. I know, but he would love that. Squeaky cheese. Squeaky cheese? Squeaky cheese. We'll send you squeaky cheese, dear leader, if you get, listen to the show. Yeah. Uh, we'll have you on. I'll call you up. And you can uh, maybe have something to say. Absolutely. Yeah. I know Donald Trump has a hard on for you. No, I will tell you, when my sister drives down, she brings me squeaky cheese. She's yeah. Last time. They got cheese. They got cheese in uh, Poland, too. They sell cheese alongside the road. They got cheese vendors. Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird. There's a lot of cheese there, too. It's a but different, it's it's a a different type of cheese. You got to have cows. They have a lot of cows. If you have cows, you got cheese. Okay. And, and, and it, goats. If you, uh, goat cheese. We, normally, we say, leave us a review on... Um, Whatever platform you listen to, especially um, iTunes, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, it's got uh, uh, Spotify, Spotify, all the all those things, Google, wherever you uh, Absolutely. listen. Absolutely, or even on our Facebook, you can leave. A, oh, follow! Become follow a follower on Facebook. on Facebook. Look up uh, Keys Bartender. I put. I made a mistake. I changed it to a company since we became an LLC. Now we have two. We have the Keys Bartender, <laughs> oh. and we have Keys Bartender. It's the one that has Jim. We have both. I'm going to combine them. I'm going to combine them. The right. same well, one. Well, for right now. We own both. So, if, I mean, if you see Jim's face both. looking through a shot glass, then that is the That was one. actually a prescription shot glass. Yes. It was. It was given to me by a former bartender who uh, became an optometrist. Oh, how fabulous. Not true. Hmm. Not true at all. <laughs> but thank you very but much. Leave us a review. Yep. Send us some comments. We'll definitely love to talk to you on Let's the Let's see if we can get this to work. This is uh, oh, he's using his stylus. Color. Color. Yeah, I'm using my it's yeah. working now. Oh, he's playing. <laughs> oh, I gotta bring up the volume. I'm up the volume. Up. Dance, dance. I didn't have the volume up. That's the reason why I didn't play in the beginning. <laughs>